Uh, I I turn to Rolf, thank you. Uh, so Rolf, you were recently the uh, director of uh, uh, the aeronautical branch of DLR in Germany. So I would ask you, how do you see uh, in the, the, the involvement of research establishment in what could be the future landscape of research uh, uh, with this new uh, new landscape of uh, technologies, of, uh, of challenges? Uh, Which science or uh, technological domain could grow in the future, and how do you see the involvement of, uh, of research establishment? All right, thanks, Bruno. Um, well, I guess it covers the whole world, more or less. <laughs> so we're maybe starting with, with the atmosphere and atmosphere research. So if we, if we would reduce our view on the impact of radiation just to carbon neutrality, I think research-wise the job would be done. As we heard today, this can be reached by synthetic fuels or stuff. However, as far as we know, CO2 is only one-third of the impact of aviation. And it's not only the emission, it's the impact in total, including contrails and clouds, and not to talk about life cycle and other issues. So what do we need to do in terms of impact assessment and impact mitigation? So increase the research on the atmosphere, develop Earth models, link them, carry out validation measurements by drones farms on land, in water and in the atmosphere, plus use hyperspectral satellite data. Mm. And in parallel, and because the receptivity of the atmosphere for emissions is different, depending on altitude and latitude and time, set up a concept for environmentally friendly routings for air traffic. That's really easier said than done, as everybody knows who ever talked about CESAR and other activities. Take an industrial view, and within the next decade, we need to answer the most important question uh, that has been addressed here in this conference already. Will the future aviation fuel be hydrogen, either for fuel cells or for direct burn, or will it be these SUFs, the sustainable aviation fuels? And if it comes to hydrogen, for all new issues like tanks, fuel cells, electromotors, we have neither full-size components yet, nor certification rules, nor infrastructures. In addition, challenges remain for any new aircraft. New altitude and latitude adaptive routings ask for a new, robust, multi-point design of an aircraft. Because source noise is almost covered, we need a real new low-noise low configuration. And linked to this, we need other passengers' processes, including aircraft cabins as part of a society-friendly door-to-door journey. So whatever it is, hydrogen or ZAF, there's a need for a completely new aircraft. And in order to take decisions for such a new aircraft or knowledge base, we need flight demonstrators going far beyond the typical technology feasibility studies. Instead of tiny modifications on the standard plane, we we'll rather need X planes. And concerning research, we have the universities for basic research and for specific tasks. Furthermore, there are the research establishments like ONRA, DLR, and others for larger programmatic approaches and research infrastructures. And finally, we need the industrial research for closing the gap to our products, but also for carrying out the work on real and large hardware. For example, atmosphere research, as described, must be done by academia and by research establishments. But when it comes to demonstrators, much work must be done by industry, as is asked for design organizations, DOs. Today, technology funding goes up to TL6, which means that the technology is demonstrated in the relevant environment. In order to take decisions, we need a TLL of nine or more, a qualified system in the operational environment. With today's repercussions of COVID-19, we must find a new way how to organize a demonstrator for TLL larger than six. And to finish the journey, as a new topic, we need to harden the aviation system against future pandemics, and we need massive digitization to open the design space for products and operation. That's it in brief. We see what we have to do. Now we must go down this road together It will take some 10 years minimum of hard effort, but it's worth it. And finally, let me express my complete satisfaction that the aerospace associations, DGLR and AAE, are joining forces to address such issues, with our common first paper, AV number 11, as a very good example. Thanks, Bruno. Back to you. Thank you. So a lot of new topics huh, to, to, to be tackled. Yeah.